Hello ladies and gents, boys and girls, and little chicks. So the uh, yeah, the living room's going to smell for a, a week or so until these guys are big enough to go into the shed. Which is what we've got the shed for, but uh, aren't they cute little bugger lugs? So we've got five, and these are Rhode Island Red chicks. We don't know if they're boys or girls yet. There might be some kind of auto-sex indistinct uh, markings on them, but I don't know how to do it. So we're gonna we're gonna raise them all to a certain age, and then uh, we might have a cockerel for the pot when we're a bit further down the line. We shall see. But we bought uh, twelve fertile eggs from eBay. Is he all right under there? Yeah, he's just having a peck. 12 fertile eggs from an eBay seller and I'm really pleased so uh, it looks like all of them were fertile what are you doing mister? all of them were fertile uh, one of them didn't really make it past day four uh, in terms of development it, you could see that uh, there was a, a network of veins inside the shell uh, but I decided to take that one out on day 12 when I candled them again. And on day 12, all of the remaining eggs looked like they'd set. So that left us with 11. Uh, they've been hatching now for two days. So we've decided to move them into the brood box and check the remaining eggs. One of the eggs had pipped. And the chick had kind of died in the shell just before it got out and... It happens, it's happened pretty much on every single hatch that we've done. It's unfortunate, but it does happen. And uh, the remaining four eggs, wouldn't give a castle name four eggs for anything else. The remaining four eggs looks like they didn't really develop much past that day 12 candling point. So when I spun the eggs around, you could see there was still some liquid inside. And at that stage, there shouldn't be any liquid inside. Look at them. So yeah, these boys, uh, some of them are uh, last night, and I think the biggest one might be him over there, I'm not sure. Uh, he's been out his shell for 36, coming up 48 hours, so we had one of them almost two days before the, other, before the last one. So the whole hatch took around 48 hours, give or take. This is a little brooder, uh, it just gives off a nice gentle heat underneath to keep the chicks warm and you raise that on these stilts as they grow we've got some chick crumb in there and a little bit of water when we transfer them into the brood box uh, we just dip their beaks into the water so they know where it is and then you put them directly under the brooder and then uh, they're immediately aware that that's a safe zone and a heat source another thing to note as well if you're doing something like this Obviously make sure people like him can't eat the chicks because he's really interested. This is actually the second batch of uh, chicken hatchlings that Reggie's seen because he was a puppy last year when we did the last ones. Weren't you boys? Look at his tail going. So yeah, I've got to make sure that he can't get to them. So we'll be, we'll be locking the door when we're not here. And uh, when you put... Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, the water and the food in. Just make sure there's enough space around the back of the water bowls, the food bowls, and also the uh, brooder has got space at least on three sides so that no chicks can get trapped anywhere. Because if they get trapped behind the water or the food, they will die of exposure. And sometimes if you've got the brooder in a corner, they can get trapped underneath because there's only two ways out and they can't get past the other chicks. So having it against one side should be fine and leaving the other three open just prevents any accidents. This fella don't want to go back in, look. But he'll soon learn. Anyway, there we are. We have five new additions to the family. And what I'm going to do is use the other chicken pen that we've got to acclimatise these girls when they're about 10, 15 weeks old to outside. And then I put that chicken pen, the old coop, inside the new Cluckingham Palace 
to allow them to mix with the other chickens but have some protection from them and then gradually uh, when these guys are big enough they have to be able to fight for themselves we'll introduce them proper and they can all live together as one big happy family in the right Reggie oh good boy do you like your new little chickies come and have a look what is it you can hear them can't you mate bless him hello boys and girls I've just had a package arrive from Sweden which I wasn't anticipating so uh, shall we have a look let me cover that I've put them out look at these stamps aren't they cool never seen that type of stampage before Swedish stamp I guess don't know what it is like a picture of some type of door anyway it says sweets on the box I don't think they're not ordered any sweets <laughs> it is this. So, uh, Mark Drama, or something like that, and uh, Pal Long. No idea what these are. There's an accompanying note. Thank you for your kind reply about your brewery and host sizes. Here's cookies to your family from our own bakery. Vet and Rag or Rab. Uh, Halon Grotta, Raspberry Cave, and uh, Mardroin Nightmare Chocolate from Eric. Uh, P.S. Vit and Rag, Vit and Rag, is on Facebook. There we go. Let's go and have a look at that. Well, thank you very much, sir. I'll share these cookies with the kids with a nice cup of tea later on. Very much appreciated.